over 80% of the world say they're religious. Think of that. 80%. It must be true we are physical, we are emotional, psychological, and there is this spiritual religious side of us. And according to the Pew Research Center, it estimates that the largest of all religious bodies in the world is still the Christian faith. Christians come in at 2.36 billion, followed by 1.90 billion Muslims, 1.15 billion Hindus, 506 million Buddhists, and a log list goes on and on in a world that is filled with diverse religious expressions. It can really be challenging to understand. So, so what makes what we do on Sunday morning unique? What are the unique characteristics of the faith community that calls itself Christian? And that gets a little more dicey when you also think that, that different faiths, they, they share many of the common teachings that we share on morality, on charity, or devotion. For instance, the, the expression, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, that Almost verbatim is found in a number of the world's great religions. It's not just unique to Christianity. Yet, there is something. Something unique about our faith. What is that? Why does Christianity stand out in a crowded religious landscape. And that's what I'd like for us to look at. Not sizing ourselves up and saying why we are better than anyone else. Not at all. But what is it that's unique about the Christ follower and the Christ followers church that we can glean from scripture? Well, to begin with, it, it's about a person, if you think. Uh, the uniqueness of Christianity begins with the person of Jesus Christ. Now, while, while other religions have prophets or sages or spiritual leaders, Christianity claims something that, that I would submit is much more profound for Jesus is not just a teacher or some kind of moral leader. He's the son of God. God incarnate. And the apostle John, he begins his gospel by noting that. It's a passage that we often read at the beginning of Advent as we approach Christmas about this incarnation of God in Christ. And John expressed it this way. He said, in the beginning was the word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then it talks about how the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. What a remarkable, inspiring, creative way to talk about how God comes into this world. So Christianity, Christianity, this is a unique characteristic, is the only faith where God descends to humanity rather than humanity striving to ascend to God. Big difference. And in Jesus, we declare, we affirm, that God walked among us, fully divine, 
fully human. Bridging that gap between heaven and earth, no other religion claims a God who became like one of us, who walked, if you will, in our shoes, who experienced our pain and ultimately died for you and for me. So it it begins with the person. And to take Jesus out of Christianity would be like, it's like taking numbers out of mathematics or or taking a, a physician out of healing or trying to think of daylight without the sun. Jesus is what constitutes Christianity as a unique faith, first and foremost. But there's another aspect of what we are about, and it is a message of grace. Grace is at the forefront of our faith. Now, for sure, most religions, they, they will offer some kind of system to, to, to work towards that. It could be works or good deeds or rituals or the adherence of certain kinds of laws. And if you're, you're good in handling those laws, you'll be fine as a means of gaining God's favor by, by some kind of performance plan. But Christianity is different. This idea is turned upside down and that it proclaims that love is a gift from God, a gift that is given, that we are invited to open and receive. It's not something that we can earn through our efforts. Those good things we seek to do in our faith is as a result of and a response to, but not to gain the love of God. And in the epistle to Ephesians, we find these words, for it is by grace, grace only, grace. Grace is God's love for people who don't deserve it. That's all it is. It is by grace you have been saved. Through faith, it is not from yourselves, it is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. We're all on this ship together. Now, this radical concept of grace means that no matter how flawed or how broken we are, God's love for us, it it isn't based on your annual review on a performance plan on how you live the year. It is based solely on God's gracious love and God's enormous mercy. So that's one of the unique factors. Christianity stands alone in offering a God who loves unconditionally and saves us not because of our worthiness, but because of God's goodness. And then at the heart of Christianity, another thing to uplift is the cross and the resurrection of Jesus. Two significant, empowering words that's unique to how we connect with God. The cross, it it, it symbolizes the ultimate sacrifice where Christ died to heal the world's brokenness. And no other religion has such a powerful symbol of sacrificial love. And here's how the Apostle Paul expressed it in Corinthians. He said, For I am resolved to know nothing while I was with you except for Jesus Christ and what? And him crucified. It's also expressed that by his stripes we are healed. 
but it doesn't end there. Yet, the cross is not the end of the story because we are also about the resurrection of our Lord. That's what sets Christianity apart from any other faith, that Jesus conquered death. The Easter story isn't some kind of myth or some kind of Passover plot. It never would have survived the thousands of years that it has if it wasn't real. Jesus conquered death, and that offered hope. But that is hope not just for this life, but also, as our Lord expressed it, it is hope for eternity. The resurrection is God's proof that Jesus is who he claimed to be. That was a deciding factor. And his victory for us, and it's final, and it's eternal. So Christianity, it's not a system, okay? Not a, merely a system of beliefs and practices and disciplines. If you get in this kind of state, you will experience nirvana. It is fundamentally about a relationship with God, which takes me to the next point of how we are unique. It is an invitation to a relationship. Some people have the idea that, that religion, any kind of religion, in general is, well, there's, there's all these, um, we're, we're so, there's all these laws we have to adhere to. And, and when we adhere them, when we do them right, then, then life will be just a little better. You know, it's, it's like studying in school. If you don't study, you're not going to make the grade. You got to prepare yourself. You got you got to learn the job. You got you got to engage yourself. You got to take some calculated risk and only when you do that will you achieve it. That doesn't work with religion or with our faith. It's not about keeping laws, but a relationship. Rules without relationships leads to rebellion. And so what's critical in our faith is when we have that relationship with Christ, then we can kind of understand why maybe some of these things make sense. Maybe what I read in the Ten Commandments, it makes sense. They're not just ten suggestions. Maybe I should pay attention to those laws. And I do that first, not that I may gain a relationship, but because of the relationship, I want to live to please God. So that's another unique characteristic of our faith. While many religions will focus on rules and rituals to appease a distant deity, Christianity offers something that is far more intimate. A personal relationship with the Creator. And Jesus invites us into that relationship when he said this, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Maybe you walked here this morning and you're weary and burdened. Or maybe you're watching online and a hurricane's coming. You're weary. You're burdened. Through the power and the authority of Scripture, we realize that God, through Christ, desires to know us personally and to walk with us intimately. This relational aspect of Christianity is unique unique in its depth and its offer of communion with God. Coming to the end, stick with me. Finally, Christianity is also unique in that it, there is the empowerment of believers through the Holy Spirit. There is what we know of as the power of the Holy Spirit of God. 
After Jesus' ascension, what happened? What was the promise? Jesus promised that the Spirit, he would send the Spirit who would guide, comfort, and empower his followers. And as a church, we have to, we, it's about the Holy Spirit moving upon us to guide and empower and follow. This mysterious spirit works within us to transform our lives, giving us the ability then to live as Christ would have us to live. So this indwelling presence of God is a key element in the differentiation of Christianity. God the Father, the Creator. God the Son, the Redeemer. God, the Holy Spirit, the enabler. Well, in a world where many paths lead to God, many paths lead to God. They do. But there's something about Christianity. Christianity offers something utterly, utterly unique. It offers God, who became a human. It offers a message of grace. A Savior who defeated death. And a relationship with the living God and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Think of those five things. These core truths, those ancient truths, they remind us here today that Christianity isn't just one religion among many. Take your pick, go to the smorgasbord, go to the mall, see what looks good. It is a story of God's radical love for us. A love, <laughs> it is a love that changes everything. So let's rejoice. Let's rejoice in this uniqueness of our faith and boldly proclaim this hope that we have in Christ, sharing the message of grace with a world that desperately needs it. Would you please stand for prayer? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you with grateful hearts, amazed by the uniqueness of your love and truth that is revealed through Jesus Christ. For we are in a world filled with many voices, Many voices and many paths. And we thank you for this clarity and this hope that, that we do find in your word. You have shown us the way. Not through human wisdom, but through the life, death, and resurrection of your son, Jesus. Lord, help us to, to live in all of this grace each day. As we encounter a world of different beliefs and ideas, may we never lose sight of the simple truth that sets us apart in the name of Jesus, who reigns forever and ever.